Americans spend 55% of their waking hours sitting. So that is why you may have heard this, that the medical profession is now calling sitting the new smoking. You know, why is that? How could that be? Why is sitting so bad for us? Well, because we weren't meant to sit. We were meant to move. Um, so sitting, they've found, causes an increase in heart disease, metabolic syndrome, which is a combination of obesity, heart disease, and diabetes. It causes an increase in diabetes. They actually believe that sitting all day also causes a great increase in the likelihood of cancer or dying from any reason prematurely whatsoever. So yoga is the perfect counterpose to sitting because we move the body in all directions, not just this position. And it's not that we're sitting with this perfect posture at our desks. We're sitting like this. So that's also created a epidemic of neck pain and back pain, carpal tunnel, um, knee pain, because of the way we tuck our feet underneath us when we sit at chairs. And yoga has been proven to be the most efficacious program in healing back pain, more so than exercise and PT and all the other things that we do to try and heal our back pain. And the interesting thing about this that yoga teachers need to know is that the greatest increase in number of people coming to yoga is in the 55 and over category. By and large, more people come to yoga every year that are 55 and over than any other age group. And yoga grows at a rate of 25% a year. So 25% more people come to yoga every year than the year before. Meaning in 2018, there will be an estimated 60 million people doing yoga. And a big share of them are gonna be older than 50. So as a yoga teacher, you know, when you're in your 200 hour training and you look around, everyone's flexible and fit, whether they're young or not. But, so, and you're teaching them in your 200 hour training. You're learning to teach the other people in your class. And that's easy, right? You say, go to headstand and everyone goes into this perfect headstand. But in real life, in your classes, that's not gonna be the case. So a 200 hour is a great place to start, but if you really wanna be effective and be able to work with the people coming to class and the growing population of people over 50 coming to yoga, you really need a little more training. And they probably do. And that's one segment of the population. And not to take away from that segment of the population, it's, it's great, you know, I'm 50 and I feel like I could go do that. But more and more people are coming to their yoga mat not because they wanna be buff, but because their back hurts or their shoulder hurts because they've been sitting all day, right? So they need to come to their mat with a little more awareness than someone who, you know, they, they go out, they jog five miles, they lift weights, they're in, you know, we're in Southern California. People are in better shape here than most places. They are. But more and more, these people are coming to their mats. That big growth in yoga of 25% more people a year isn't coming from the people who are already fit because they're already doing yoga. This is coming from the people who are not fit. They're sitting at their desks all day. They're facing heart disease and diabetes and back pain and neck pain and carpal tunnel syndrome. And they're the ones who really need our help. They're the ones who yoga is really going to benefit in a way that for someone who's a runner, yeah, yoga's great, right? It's, it's stress reducing, it's stretching out all those muscles that they're working every day, but the people that I'm talking about are not those people. They are the people that come in, they sit down, they look around, they're thinking, am I in the right place? Can I do this? And we wanna make sure they know they are in the right place and they can do it. And we wanna make sure they leave 
feeling as great as the people who go and they sweat it out at yoga six and they walk out and they feel great. We want everyone to feel great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yay. <laughs>